the policy of Kamala Harris in this election has been to let her anonymous uh, campaign officials suggest that she is now back in favor of fracking and that she's actually a moderate and centrist when it comes to these policies. But there's also evidence that they're backing away from those things. So all that they have done is create confusion and there's absolutely no reason for voters to trust that under a Harris administration there would be uh, uh, policies that promote the supply of uh, electricity uh, and secure the energy future. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with The Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gurdon. And Hugo, this week you wrote about a coming revival of nuclear power in the U.S. It's been a long time coming. So why has it taken this long, and why is it so important that it happens? Yeah, it's an extraordinary thing, Sarah, that it, it, a year ago one could not have foreseen this, or those who did were just the experts in the field, perhaps. But suddenly, uh, nuclear plants are being revived, or, or contracts are being signed for their revival. The latest was a, a utility company just today saying it was going to reopen a nuclear site. What has been happening is that there has been a massive, there is a massive increase in the uh, demand for electricity. This is partly driven by uh, government mandates for the purchase of electric cars. They have to be charged and you charge them with electricity. The electricity has to be supplied. Even though a lot of people don't want electric cars, nevertheless the mandates force that. But perhaps an even bigger thing is that uh, the development of artificial intelligence means massively more computing power is necessary and to drive those, that computing power, much more electricity is needed. And big tech companies like uh, uh, Microsoft, for example, uh, you know, Microsoft has signed a contract for the reopening of Three Mile Island. Uh, now, Three Mile Island shut down in 1979, so as you say, a very long time ago, because of a meltdown there. And nuclear power has been um, out of favor for decades. But now, rising demand is meeting falling capacity and capacity falling because of green policies from uh, the Biden administration and the Harris administration. Um, so those two lines have crossed and suddenly people are realizing that they have to go out and meet the demands for electricity and nuclear power is the way to do it because it can pro provide a stable, steady supply. The Harris campaign has been all over the map on, on where Kamala Harris actually stands on right. fracking, on drilling leases, on all sorts of things. If you had to, could you even articulate what the Harris energy platform is versus Trump's, which is pretty clear? It's not so easy to articulate their platform as to articulate their strategy. Uh, they have very unpopular energy policies. Um, because they have to try and appease the uh, environmental lobby and not lose their votes, they have been willing to impose uh, mandates and, the, and, and, and regulations that stop the building of, uh, uh, you know, for, for example, you know, stop more drilling on public land and that kind of thing. Now, there's energy extraction at the moment is the highest it's ever been, but what Biden and Harris have done is create huge uncertainty in the energy market, and that stops investment. So people can see uh, problems with the future supplies because of lack of investment uh, by the industry. Um, the policy of Kamala Harris in this election has been to let her anonymous uh, campaign officials suggest that she is now back in favor of fracking and that she's actually a moderate and centrist when it comes to these policies. But there's also evidence that they're backing away from those things. So all that they have done is create confusion. And there's absolutely no reason for voters to trust that under a Harris administration, there would be uh, uh, policies that promote the supply of uh, electricity uh, and secure the energy future. In contrast, uh, Donald Trump, when he was president, used to talk about energy dominance. That was designed to, as a strategic matter, not simply a supply matter. He wanted to use American energy supplies to marginalize the need for Russian supplies or supplies from the turbulent Middle East. Uh, there's, he had an all of the, of, of the above policies, and that was designed to make uh, the United States energy secure. 
Uh, so there's a very s clear distinction between the two, much as the Harris campaign wants to muddy the waters. In California especially, we do have some real-world examples of what happens when Democratic wish list items on energy are implemented, and, and to a lesser extent, we have the past four years of, of Democratic right. control of Washington. What do we know about what happens when Democrats implement those? Well, what happens is that people decide they want to move to different states uh, where f I mean, energy costs in California are absolutely sky high. That's because of restrictions and taxes and a policy to try and eliminate fossil fuels, which of course is something that uh, both Harris and Biden um, at different times have said that they want to do. So the tidal trend a tendency on the Democratic side is to make fossil fuels more expensive, to reduce their use, um, and people vote with their feet. And the Californians who are voting with their feet are doing so by leaving the country for places where energy costs are not so high. Well, Hugo, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You can get more writing from Hugo and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.